G'day, it's Adam Moore of VK4GHZ. This is part four in a series of videos looking at my Nexion display for a K3NG rotator controller system. In this video, we're gonna look at satellite tracking and how to get the TLEs, or the Keplerian elements, into your microcontroller. So stick around. All right, satellite tracking, very easy to implement. So just looking at our rotator features.h file, you do need to have uh, elevation control already enabled. And with the define feature satellite tracking, we will remove those slashes, compile the file and upload that to our microcontroller. All right, and as we can see, we've got satellite tracking enabled. Now. Just to show you what version we're running here, it's Arduino code version 2020.09.17.01 and the next gen version is 2020.10.18.01. View the features, you can see that I've got the GPS clock synchronization enabled, elevation control is enabled. These are my, uh, my park is uh, set. These are my park coordinates. Auto park is enabled, however it's turned off, being set to zero minutes. This is the data from the GPS. And I've got tracking, um, and in tracking features, I've got satellite, moon, and sun enabled. Now, with the satellite tracking enabled, there's a new page that becomes available, the satellite tracking page. There's one satellite that's hard coded into it, it's called AO7 Test, and it's actually uh, within range at the moment. So, what we'll do, we will download the Keplerian elements or the TLEs, the two line elements, uh, from a website and we will build up our TLE list and upload it to the microcontroller. All right, to get the TLEs, or the Keplerian elements, we're gonna to go to amsat.org, forward slash TLE, forward slash current, forward slash NASA bear dot TXT. Handy to bookmark. We're gonna select all, edit, I'm gonna copy that. Depending on what type of microcontroller and how much EE prom you have, the Arduino Mega 2560 has 4K of EEPROM. That will hold about 31 uh, sets of uh, TLEs. So you can hold 31 satellites in it. I'm using a, a Teensy 3.2. That only has 2K of EEPROM. That will hold about 15 TLEs, which at the end of the day is plenty. There's only about, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 odd satellites that are workable here anyway. So. 15 is fine. Now I'm a little bit fussy about the satellites. I like to arrange them in a specific order so it matches SAT PC32. So what I've done, I've drawn up a list of the satellites of interest for me. Um, I've arranged them in an order that makes makes sense to me. Uh, it's generally numeric, so top of the list would be AO7, AO27, RS44, SO50. So you can see it's numerically sorted. Then I get into other satellites like CAS4A, CAS4B, XW2A, XW2B, 2C, 2F. So there is some sort of logic to the sort. So And that matches what I have set up in SAT PC32. So what I'm going to do, from what's available on this amsat.org website, I'm going to cut and paste the whole lot into Notepad. So edit, uh, select all, copy. Into Notepad, I'm just going to do edit, paste, like so. And I'm going to rearrange them and just get them in order. I'm just going to filter them all out and get them rearrange them into the order that suits me. Now what I'm going to do is run PuTTY. This is a terminal program. I just happen to have set this up to suit the Tinksy port. I'm going to load that session. Like so. Now the Tinksy, uh, the, the PC is plugged into the Tinksy, so just to verify that comms work, I'm going to type H for help and there we can go. There we see the the microcontroller responding to the H command. A list of list of commands available there. Alright, so I've filtered the Keplerian elements down to a list that just suits me in and the order that I'm I'm happy with. So what I'm going to do now is um, I will select everything. I will cut and paste that copy to the clipboard. Done with that. Now, just referring to the wiki, the K3NG Rotator Controller page 820 command reference page, the commands of interest to us doing satellites are here. And as you can see, backslash hash, 
is the command to load satellite Keplerian elements file into EEPROM. So using putty, that's exactly what we will do. Backslash hash. And you can see it's prompting us based bare a paste bare TLE file text now double return to end so using putty I'm just going to right click there it is there double enter file stored whatever you do don't attempt to use the Arduino IDE to cut and paste your satellite Keplerian elements into it it just won't work the reason is the Arduino IDE will strip the carriage return and line feeds so this is well documented in the K3NG rotator controller 707 satellite tracking wiki page. So if you'd like to refer to that, uh, Goody does recommend the use of putty. It's something I've been using here, and as you've seen, it's just it's painless. It's um, most of the time is spent just rearranging and massaging the, the data into an order that that suits you. But if, if you're not that fussed about the the TLE um, the li your satellite list and the order it's in, even quicker. All right, now that we've got some satellite Keplerian elements loaded into our K3NG rotator controller system, I'll walk you through the Nexion page. So as you can see here, this is our current azimuth and elevation of our rotors. This is our currently selected satellite. This is telling us uh, we've got acquisition of a signal in one hour and six minutes. This is our current satellite azimuth and the uh, elevation, which corresponds to a latitude and longitude uh, here. Now, to activate satellite tracking uh, for this particular satellite, we've selected, it's just a matter of touching the button there. What it will do, it will send your rotors into a position so it gets ready to capture it as soon as it pops up over the horizon. Now, as you can see, we're at the correct azimuth. I'm just going to deactivate that for now. All right, now that we've got our K3NG rotator controller system full of satellites that interest us, the way to select a satellite's really easy. Just a short touch of the satellite name like so. That brings up a list of all the satellites that you have in there. And to select a satellite, it's just a matter of touching it. Um, so I'm gonna go for AO73, touch. The status bar at the top will tell you AO73 is selected, press return, like so. So this is telling us We'll have acquisition of signal in seven minutes' time. Now, if I were to press Sat Track Activate, what it's going to do, it's going to send our rotors to the position in order to capture it just as it pops up over the horizon. Now, a short press of the AOS box here will plot that on a world map. What this does, it plots a yellow marker on the map with a dark red shadow and over time you'll see it leaves a trail behind it so you'll get an idea of which way the satellite is heading. AO73 is just about to cross over the 180th meridian. All right, now just taking a look at SAT PC32, we can see this is reporting um, AO73 just southeast of New Zealand and uh, acquisition of signal in about four minutes' time. So to get out of the world map, all you need to do is just touch it briefly. Now, a long touch of the AOS box will bring up a list of satellites in ascending AOS order. So you can see the satellites that are going to pop up over your horizon in time order. So AO73 is popping up in about a minute here. In 16 minutes time, we can expect to see XW2F and so on. Now I should point out another way of selecting a satellite other than a short touch here and then just selecting your satellite on the list. You have the option of doing a long touch. Then you can manually enter in the satellite name. So, we'll just backspace and we'll type in A O hyphen seven three. So we'll go back to that satellite. Enter. There we go. It selected it. Okay, the satellite's now in range and tracking has commenced. Now, um, my linear actuator is just sitting on the bench next to me, so that's why it's doing that. 
and this box here now changes to reporting LOS, loss of signal, in 11 minutes. Now, when you're tracking, you'll notice the satellite icon down the bottom here changes. So we've got a T over the satellite. All right, so I'm just going to manually adjust my elevation sensor. All right, so that's satellite tracking. I'm just going to deactivate that for now. So we'll just go over the controls uh, briefly. So a short touch on the satellite name will bring up a list where you can just simply touch the name to select that particular satellite return. Or a long touch where you get the opportunity to type in a name. Say PO10 something. Couldn't quite remember the name. It will do a search for you and it found PO101. A short touch of the AOS LOS box will bring up a world map and will plot where the satellite is at the particular time. Touch return to go back. A long touch of the box there will bring up a list of the satellites in ascending acquisition of signal order. If you need any assistance getting your K3NG rotator controller system up and running, what you can do, you can head to, as per the about page here, Join the Radio Artisan Group on Groups.io and we'll just take a look at that. So there's lots of folks out there that can help you and assist you uh, with suggestions if you're having any dramas. The firmware for my Nexion display for the K3NG Rotator Controller System is available on my website, vk4ghz.com. So if we take a look at that, just click on the Downloads button at the top. And here you'll see the VK4GHZ K3NG Rotator Controller. Click on that, It'll take you to the page regarding my Rotator Controller System project. And if you scroll down, I've got available this the schematic for my controller, for the main board, the remote board, and there's also the uh, downloadable zips for the TFT and the HMI versions of the Nexion firmware. All right, so that's a bit of an introduction into the VK4GHZ Nexion display for the K3NG antenna rotator controller system. Hope you got some value out of that, and don't forget, if you'd like some uh, more information or support, go to the group's IO, Radio Artisan Group, and we'll see you there.